Hey guys, today we're going to be reacting to a Simon's Quest by the Angry Video Game Nerd. Now, I really, really enjoy this game. This was his first ever video. He doesn't enjoy it that much. We're going to find out why and discuss. This game sucks. Castlevania 1 and 3 are great classic Nintendo games, but for Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, the game designers obviously were not thinking straight. Well, I think some things did get lost in translation, being that it was produced in Japan. But on the same note, obviously in the late 80s, they weren't going to quite have the Metroidvania style down right yet. So I do agree with you for the most part. There could have been things improved, but it's a sign of the times as well. At first, it seems like a pretty decent game. A little different from the first in the series, but that's okay. It's a bit of a culture shock was the first one. From the first. Mario 2 was different, but they were all good. The first thing that's strikingly different is the fact that you have to go through towns, talk to people, and buy stuff. Never really minded that. It makes it a little more like an adventure story, and it's yeah, kind of like Yeah, it gave like it a Zelda. sense of realism, so okay. too. But the first problem comes in when it changes from day to night. Okay, so what happens in this game is it has a day-to-night cycle. No big deal. You want to get the really hard stuff done during the daytime if you can, because when the night cycle comes, the enemies become a lot tougher. At the same time, the rewards for like the drops that they give and everything is a lot higher as well for some enemies, so there is a payoff for that. I don't really feel like the day and night cycle altered my experience in the game at all myself, but let's see what he's got to say. A few hours later. Why does this need to happen so often? Like every five minutes? Why does it take so long? Nobody feels like sitting through this every time. How would you like it if you were playing a game and then every five minutes I came over and paused it, then counted 10 tedious seconds, and then let you continue to play the game? Actually, you know what? He has a point. When it goes from day to night, it's not the problem that it goes, happens every like five minutes, but the fact that there's such a long pause in between transitions. They actually came out with an NES ROM hack of this game called Simon's Redaction which fixed a lot of things, and one of the things it improved on was actually the transition between the day and night cycle. It made it a lot quicker. So if that's what his complaint is, he has a point. It is a bit slow, but again, it didn't really ruin my experience. Some bitch just is impatient either. <laughs> no, I mean, why did they think that that would be a good idea and interrupt the gameplay? Did they think it would be more realistic? I mean, in real life, I don't have to stop in my tracks when the sun sets and a fucking box doesn't pop up in the air. I mean, this is one of the most annoying features in any game ever. What's the point? Yeah, I mean, the monsters are stronger at night and the stores are closed, but why is that necessary and why does the game have to stop? It's fucking retarded. I kind of feel like the day-night cycle added to the immersion for me. And why do you have to die when you fall in the water? That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. This guy can go all over fighting hordes of evil monsters, but he can't even fucking swim? You know what? I'll give you that. There's just so many games, even up until the 2000s, where water was instant death. I found it really funny, even in a newer game, not to go off track too much, like Vice City, like Tommy Vassetti would go in the water and he would drown instantly. Like, did the guy not even learn how to do doggy paddle? So yeah, that was an annoying feature about retro games, just drowning instantly, and, and Simon's Quest is no different, I'll give you that. Yeah, so the knockback is just hell. Sometimes I don't feel like going down the stairs just to get down to ground level. I mean, there's no reason I should have to do that when I can just take a shortcut and jump down. Ah! So, oops, <laughs> I shouldn't do that. I, I've done that so many there. times in this game. Another yeah, that, thing that is that's annoying. really annoying about this game is the fact that you have to buy weapons and items. I mean, still, it's not uncommon. You know, like I said, that's the same thing you have to do in many great games like Zelda. But let me explain. Here you have to collect hearts, uh -huh. which count as money. I mean, that's kind of odd because usually hearts count it's as hell, life. I know, that is a bit game. weird. Same you know, in Kid Icarus. So it was also currency strange, in that but, game too. You know, that's not the point. The point is that the items you need to buy are too fucking expensive. Well, they're not actually that bad. But this is the problem. So I usually do my grinding in the beginning of the game. As I said, I am ex experienced at this, so I don't die as often as what I used to. So if you could do a little bit of grinding in the beginning of the game, you can go get the holy water and then go get the chain whip and stuff, and you're set if you just spend one night grinding the witches in one of the town. No problem. But uh, the problem is, if you die, you only get three lives of credit. If you die, uh, you will respawn and all your currency will be gone. So that's a problem. So you could have a lot of currency, a lot of XP, and then you lose your last life. Boom, wiped, erased. That is what bothers me a little bit about this game. Not, not the prices of the items themselves. And the hearts don't add up enough. 
it takes too long to get enough of them to buy something, and it gets boring wandering around killing the same monsters over and over again just so you can buy a flame whip or something. Speaking of flame whip, that's pretty weird itself, isn't it? I mean, they were really being <laughs> creative with that one. The flame whip. Anyway, about the hearts. It takes too long to buy stuff, and to add on to the problem, when you die, you lose all your hearts and you have to start all over again. Yeah, I mean, see, doing he, he this doesn't on that add point any too. of the game's difficulty or challenge. It just makes us have to do more of the same and non stuff over again. And it's you know what? Fair enough. I agree with that point. It, it is a little bit annoying after a while. Usually when I do the grinding on this game is when I'm on live stream and I'm talking with my community. So I, I have to keep into account that actually passes the time while I'm grinding and talking to the community. I'm doing multiple things at once. I'm not getting bored. Yeah, if, if I was doing this on my own, i, I got to give him a little bit of credit here. You know, I didn't think I'd be agreeing with him as much as what I am today. But yeah, as much as I do enjoy this game, that is certainly a flaw. It's not fun. It's boring. Oh look, I finally got enough hearts to go and buy a plant that I need to cross the swamp. Now let me get to the store. Oh shit, it's fucking nighttime. Now the <laughs> stores are all closed and I have to wait for it to turn day again. You have oh, to wait well. a whole five minutes, I might minutes. as well kill annoying. some zombies in the meantime and stock up on some more hearts. Oh shit, now I gotta start all over again. Right, so he's in the mansion. One of the worst things in the game are the pitfalls, which are areas where there's like stones or blocks yeah, and it looks like you could walk on them, but instead Invisible you just drops, that's so annoying. It's yeah, there are a couple invisible drops in this that are so annoying, and uh, if you don't know where they are, they can take you right back to the beginning of the map, and then you could just have to backtrack like three minutes for no reason, apart from the fact that the game just wanted to troll you. That is really, really annoying. Again, I do forget about those a little bit because if you have holy water and you experience the game, you can throw the holy water around and you'll be able to find out where the occasional drop is. But if you forget and you're kind of in like automation mode, you'll drop down and you've just instantly wasted three minutes. That is really annoying. That it's is. It's impossible to tell where these spots are the first time walking through. Exactly. So you just the have to keep throwing holy know. water all over to see where they are. It's retarded. Why should I have to do that? Again, it doesn't add up to any of the fun, you know, challenge of the game. It's just unfair and it's annoying. In the dungeons, there's no bosses at the end, which is a big disappointment. Every Nintendo gamester knows that at the end of a level or a dungeon, labyrinth or whatever, there's always supposed to be a big guy who you fight. But here, they just got lazy and only put a few bosses in the game and left some of the dungeons just empty like this. As fun as the dungeons are to go through, I'll admit they are a little bit anticlimactic by not having a proper bosses in them. And the, the two bosses that there are, are, not including the final boss, just have very basic patterns. They're very uninspired. Doesn't really take away my experience. Another thing that's a little bit annoying about the dungeons though, is if you're playing a game like Zelda 2 or, or Legend of Zelda or whatever, you'll beat a dungeon, mansion, whatever, and then you'll be teleported immediately straight back to the start of that level. Not in Simon's Quest, you have to walk all the way back to the beginning. That was an annoying thing about Metroid as well, by the way. This one. So most of the dungeons you go through, the mansions to be exact, there's nothing at the end except for a crystal orb that you can't touch. In the rest of the Castlevania games, the tradition goes like this. You fight a boss, you defeat him, then an orb comes down, and you touch it. There you go, on to the next you level. You need the oak stake but for in that. Castlevania 2, how would you ever figure out that you're supposed to throw an oak stake at that orb? I mean, when you first get the oak stake, you assume it's a weapon, and you throw it only to find that it does absolutely uh, yeah, nothing. Yeah, it's very, very and easy to waste. waste. They cost it fifty bucks too. So you have to get it all over again. Uh huh. They're That's fair. And a lot of us back in the day when we were playing this, obviously, was pre-internet, and so the people that had an advantage in this game. Uh, was certainly the people that bought copies of Nintendo Power that had a walkthrough, so to speak, apparently. Uh, and there's a lot of really cryptic stuff in this. And, and by absolute fluke and frustration, I figured out a few secrets. But as a kid, there was no way that I was going to be able to figure this out pre-internet by myself. I'll admit, I didn't beat the game for the first time till I was fully grown and I had access to a few guides and everything. There are parts in the game that are definitely not self-explanatory. Yeah, like this bit here where you get to like, duck with Take a red crystal. Dead end, for example. 
Would you guess that you're supposed to pass through this wall? I wonder if one of the townspeople You have to kneel clues. down by it for like 10 seconds. Now still, that's not enough to make it so cryptic and hidden that we can't figure it out. Oh, please give us more for our buck and make it harder so we can wander around the whole game and exhaust every possibility before we find out. Why isn't okay. he telling you? You must have the what? red crystal. You need to have a red crystal selected. Oh, it has to be selected as well, down. yeah. And wait a little while before this magic tornado comes. And it's like five seconds to too. You'd probably be impatient before it came. Yeah, look at that. Apparently the townsfolk are supposed to give you clues as well as to what to do But again probably lost in translation between Japanese and English And I think the manual also said the townsfolk sometimes lie So sometimes they'll give false clues too So you don't know what to believe or not Like there's one chick that I think that's like meet me at the cemetery at midnight and stuff And then you go there thinking okay it's almost midnight This hot young chick I'm about to get laid it's gonna be awesome And then she doesn't turn up and you're like what the fuck but yeah, continuing. Most of the townspeople have things to say which aren't important at all, so why do you have to read them? Here in the dungeons, there's books that you may find which actually give you clues about things in the game that you may need to know about. But when I find these books half the time, it's by accident, so I may hit the button and cancel it out, which means that oh, I don't even get to read it. Yeah, and that is have annoying. Second chance. Because then the clues Why gone can't forever? I do that when it changes from day to night? That would actually be helpful. So what the game designers figured is this: it isn't absolutely necessary for me to read about how to find Dracula's castle or what I'm supposed to do with an oak stake. But what I do need to read again and again, constantly, <laughs> is the morning sun has vanquished the horrible night. Oh I man, I can't lie. This horrible game. As much as I love this game, he has a point. Game ...is to enter a code, but even that is way more tedious than it should be. While most of the Castlevania games have symbols you enter for a code, this one just has a whole bunch of I'll numbers. admit, this is not a problem for I me. I mean, like, I one of those little parts would be enough for a password, but why four? Like, why so many? In general, I hate games that have passwords like this because sometimes they have uppercase and lowercase letters, like the L's, you know look like eyes the zeros look like o's the eights look like five so you know, yeah why... you know i i think you're harping on a little bit too much about the password system avgn look i'll admit if you've only played this a handful of times and you don't know what to do yeah the password's a necessity but once you become experienced with the game you can beat this in about an hour flat and so every time i play simon's quest now as long as i'm not collecting everything if you want to collect everything then it's going to take about 90 minutes but if you want to beat this getting the bare essentials the fast way it, it's an hour flat and so i mean i never even have to worry about this password system so i, I guess it just depends where you are on the game really why does there have to be so many digits you know like why can't it just be numbers or something like you know just numbers and not letters i mean it takes me like five minutes to enter this code when it should only take like five seconds it's friggin stupid okay so say we enter the code and we go to dracula's castle that's the final you'll be pretty disappointed how anticlimactic this game is it isn't even worth putting in a code let alone playing this final the whole game is really boring through, it's just nothing in did, there i feel bad for you it's I mean, like an abandoned all, building almost there's no enemies in dracula's castle you just walk yeah. all the way through and the only obstacles are just like going up and down yeah. steps which won't hurt you and they aren't i love the rest of the game this is really teams. underwhelming this bit i mean what the hell is the point of going through the castle if there's nobody to fight did the game designers just like run out of time or something it almost does feel so then you uh, get rushed. up to dracula so here's the final what? boss he doesn't fight. look anything like dracula instead he looks like a grim reaper and yeah he, he looks more circles. like death it's, and mean, look he's doing sides as well even know what dracula is he's a fucking vampire so technically you fight the grim reaper Dracula's twice and it's just going easy. by the graphics Check this out this is a trick that i discovered myself and so could you without the help of any strategy guide yeah, so I mean, this is a really underwhelming boss fight. All you do is throw the flame non-stop and keep him, in, especially if you have a rapid control or a rapid fire button set, all you have to do is keep throwing the fire and you'll be whipping at the same time and, and you'll basically get him spawn trapped as soon as he appears in one location and boom, there you go, game over. When Dracula first appears, he stands there for a while and he gives you plenty of time to land lots of free hits. Not only does he stand there yeah, for a there long go. time, I mean, but yeah. everything that hits him will stun him and give you even more time. Naturally, you'll probably be using the flames because it's one of the most effective weapons in the game, but you using get a couple it against of hits Dracula at with those. makes it simply impossible for him to even do anything. Yeah, they, he has no chance. Traps. The second you start throwing that shit at him, you've already won. I mean, why is it that easy? Did they even test the shitty game out before they released it? 
Also, with the endings in this game, they actually got them back to front. So you can see this beautiful, vibrant blue sky ending, I think was supposed to be the good ending. But this is actually, in this game, for some reason, the middle ending. Whereas the good ending kind of had a red sky, was a little bit more eerie and stuff. And so, again, the endings also got lost in translation. I don't know if AVN's just going to... Uh, AVGM's going to point them out today. We'll see. What a piece of shit. I mean, I feel horrible that I had to play this game in order to make this video. But I did it to demonstrate its dreadfulness, and I forced myself to play it just so that you don't have to. So you should well, thank, thank you me for, for telling you to stay away <laughs> from this horrible steaming pile of goat shit. I mean... I know it's useless complaining about a game that was made back in the late 80s or earlier 90s or whatever, but it just blows my mind how fucking horrible it is. I mean, it's consistently annoying. Why? Why is it so bad? If all these problems were changed, then we'd have a great trilogy of classic Castlevania games, but history is history, and we might as well try to count Castlevania 3 as, you know, the second in the series and leave this awful piece of horseshit alone. Well, you know what? I agree the game is flawed, but I still love it all the same. But poor AV Gen looks like he's truly traumatized by this one. Hey, you know what? I think I've heard, to be fair, that his opinion might have changed on this a little bit over the years. But, uh, hey, I definitely enjoy it more than him, despite its uh, shortcomings. As it stands today as one of the biggest fuck-ups of all time. Thank you for listening. Good night. Yeah, and thank you for listening to me. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care.